How to Break Free from Mental Fallacies, Part 1. Xie Feng. Those who focus on the outcome of life are the most unfortunate, while those who enjoy the present are the most carefree. Many people tend to weigh the pros and cons, look ahead, and consider all the possible obstacles and difficulties before making plans or decisions. I want to say that this is a mental fallacy and a mindset that leads to a pessimistic life. For example, if a couple planning to get married knows that they will divorce 10 years later, they might choose not to get married at all. And even if they do get married, their days will not be as sweet. On the other hand, if they are unaware of the future divorce, they can experience a period of sweetness and enjoy a wonderful time during their love and marriage. Suppose Life Chanyuan had informed all the Chanyuan celestials before creating the second home that no matter how many communities we build, they will eventually be destroyed by the government. In that case, would Chanyuan celestials still have the enthusiasm and passion to create numerous communities? Would they still put meticulous effort into building beautiful and magnificent communities? Of course not. If the results were not revealed in advance, Chanyuan celestials would wholeheartedly and passionately create communities, even if they were eventually destroyed. What would be the significance in that? Now I ask, are there any Chanyuan celestials who regretted their decision to participate in the creation of communities? I speculate that there isn't a single one. Why is that? It's because we have experienced a way of life that 99% of humanity has never experienced during the process of creating communities. Through first-hand experience, we have come to know the existence of the thousand-year world, and from there, we can deduce the existence of the 10,000-year world and the Elysium Celestial Islands continent. At the same time, we have experienced true happiness, joy, freedom, and bliss. As a result, our vision has expanded, our mindset has grown, our state of being has elevated, and our understanding of the current state of human society has deepened. Most importantly, our consciousness has transformed from human consciousness to celestial consciousness. This is a leap in life, a transformation, and an adventure on the glorious journey of life. Therefore, I speculate that no Chanyuan celestial regrets immersing themselves in the life of creating communities. Therefore, we come to a thinking conclusion. Engage in life, engage in creation, but do not dwell on the difficulties that may arise during the process and do not ponder over the outcome because the outcome is within the process itself. If the process is beautiful, life will be more meaningful, and the result of life is bound to be beautiful. So, do not pursue the outcome of life, for the outcome of life is death. What we pursue is the result of life. When life is elevated, no matter how the process of life unfolds, it will be meaningful and valuable. Even if the government repeatedly destroys the communities we have built, we have already obtained what we were meant to obtain and will never regret it. Look at the historical figures. The outcomes of their lives are almost always unfortunate. Knowing that life can be unfortunate, yet people in the present still passionately strive, struggle, worry, suffer, laugh, and cry. This grand drama of life on the stage continues to play out without any novelty. Those who understand this truth live extraordinary, romantic, carefree lives while those who do not understand this truth not only lead unfortunate lives, but also face even more unfortunate outcomes in life. This is called awakening, also known as enlightenment. How to break free from mental fallacies, part two. Xiefing, life shines in attachment, while life perishes in attachment. Merging life and life into one is a mental fallacy in life. Life is merely a brief moment in the journey of life, but the unfolding of this fleeting moment determines the scenery of the next journey. Due to the lack of understanding about the mysteries of life and time, people mistakenly take life as the entirety and ultimate meaning of life. Consequently, they perform tragic dramas on the stage of life. The material world is the manifestation of the non-material world, and life is but a manifestation of life. When people are captivated by the appearance of the material world and become attached to the pursuit of material wealth, status, and fame, they miss the opportunity to uplift life and in turn, sow the seeds of negative consequences. When a fish freely roams in rivers, lakes, and seas and discovers delicious bait, it rushes up and swallows it in one gulp, losing its freedom and becoming a meal on the angler's chopping board. Similarly, when people relentlessly strive for material wealth, power, status, and honor, and eventually satisfy their desires, 
They are like fish that have swallowed the bait without realizing it, indulging in self-satisfaction. However, they have already become the meat on the devil's chopping board. Not to mention historical and foreign figures, let's take a look at the individuals in modern and contemporary China who have gained fame in the fields of wealth, power, and honor. Aren't they all fish that have swallowed the bait? Now, look at ordinary people. How many of them have been or are still madly devouring the bait like fish? To make one's life brilliant, one must be attached. Attached to making money, gaining power, achieving status, acquiring fame. One can also be attached to one's marriage and family, nation and country, political parties and religions, ideologies, truths, and ideals. As long as there is attachment, life can move towards brilliance. However, when one is attached to something or a certain belief, the flower of life withers, heading towards exhaustion and decline. Consider a couple deeply in love, when they cannot bear to be apart, feeling like the world would collapse without each other, and believing that life has no meaning without their partner. He wants only to marry her, and she wants only to marry him. This is called attachment. This kind of attachment brings about a deeply romantic and sweet period in their lives, reaching the pinnacle of a passionate love affair. However, as time passes and the erosion of daily life begins, they gradually realize that their attachment has become a binding rope. The longer this feeling persists, the stronger it becomes. Because of excessive attachment, they neglect all the other scenery along the way. By the time they grow old, they realize that they have missed countless opportunities to appreciate breathtaking scenery. Beneath their smiling faces lies a sense of helplessness and endless lamentation. An old man descending from a mountain tells young people who are excitedly climbing up, there is nothing worth seeing at the mountaintop. The view is even better down below. Of course, the young people do not believe him and think, this old man just doesn't know how to appreciate the scenery. So, they keep climbing, eventually reaching the mountaintop, but also growing old. And what do they find? The old man was right all along. There really isn't anything worth seeing at the mountaintop. Consequently, one by one, these people who were once young and climbed mountains start descending. As they see the younger generation climbing with excitement, they tell them, there is nothing worth seeing at the mountaintop. The view is even better down below. However, how could the young people believe the words of the old folks? Thus, this story of climbing the mountain continues to unfold from the distant past to the present and will continue into the distant future. In the end, we will discover that especially serious people will die due to their seriousness, and especially attached individuals will die due to their attachments. Nutritionists will die due to nutrition, excessively clean people will die due to cleanliness, those desperately seeking longevity will die prematurely in pursuit of longevity, those who aspire for political power will die due to political power, those pursuing wealth will die due to wealth, and those scheming to attain power will die due to power. The list goes on. So, where is the best path in life? Take things as they are, associate with others by following naturally come-and-go relations, act in accordance with one's intrinsic nature, and take advantage of opportunities as they arise. Let go of attachment. This is the best path in life, and it also aligns with the path of the sublimation of life. Breaking free from mental fallacies, part three. Tiefing. Life is enriched through possession, while life withers through possession. When people travel by train, they buy a ticket, enter the station, board the train, travel for a distance, disembark, and exit the station. Simple and effortless. Rarely does a passenger want to buy and possess the train they are traveling on, nor do they wish to stay on the train indefinitely. Why don't passengers want to buy and possess the train? Because it is unnecessary and ownership would become a burden. Likewise, People do not desire to possess commercial airplanes or large cruise ships because they are merely using them for one journey. Perhaps they will only use them once in a lifetime. So why invest time, energy, and money to own them? However, the fallacy lies in the fact that despite knowing we are merely traveling through this earthly realm for a short period, where everything on earth is not worth possessing and even if possessed, it will eventually have to be relinquished. Why have humans tirelessly racked their brains over what to possess? Why are they even willing to pay the price of their own and others' lives to possess illusory dreams along their journeys? Let's assume we have one million in cash. 
Is it better to use that $1 million to buy a house? Or to temporarily rent someone else's house and use the remaining money for other purposes? For example, renting a house for one year with a rental payment of 20,000 yuan. Renting for 50 years would amount to 1 million yuan. From the perspective of life, buying seems better, providing a sense of security and becoming capital to flaunt to others. However, from the perspective of life's meaning, renting is, of course, better because by paying 20,000 yuan annually, one would still have plenty of money left to invest in other fields. This investment may generate more wealth, not only enough to pay the annual rent of 20,000 yuan, but also leave a surplus. In other words, after 50 years, one would still have 1 million yuan in hand, while buying the house outright would leave one penniless. Some may argue that buying a house preserves its value, while money in hand may depreciate due to inflation. However, this is also a fallacy. Houses depreciate every year and may even collapse, while money in hand has the possibility of both depreciating and appreciating. Therefore, we do not analyze or speculate on these contingent factors. What we are analyzing now is whether a possession is worthwhile. The mistaken belief of striving to possess something is a human fallacy, also the root cause preventing humans from living a heavenly life. People feel secure when they possess something. It satisfies not only their practical needs, but also their psychological desires. Consequently, the goal of their entire lives becomes to possess more. Land, houses, cars, status, wealth, honor. Moreover, they desire to possess people, such as in a marital relationship, where each claims ownership of the other. This is my man. This is my woman. This is my child. And so on. If you were to ask someone, what do you possess? And they answer, I have a villa and a luxury car. I own a company and a business. I have 200 acres of land. I have 30 cows. I have an iPhone. People would look at them with envy, respect, and even admiration. However, if the answer is, I have nothing, people would look at them with disdain, contempt, and even scorn. When the mistaken view of life, life, and values becomes a general principle for the masses, mistakes turn into correctness, fallacies turn into truth, and heaven turns into hell. When a person dedicates their lifetime and energy to possessing more and more things, they lose the qualifications to appreciate the artistic charm of life and obtain a ticket to heaven. Heaven is heaven precisely because every life possesses nothing. It is a state of having nothing. Paradoxically, it is because every life possesses nothing that it achieves the result of possessing everything. When we possess something, we feel secure. And the more we possess, the more fulfilled our lives become. Our vanity attains maximum satisfaction. However, precisely because of our possessions, we are alienated from heaven, and this is the withering of life.